everyone. Whoa. Hello. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome to service. Please stand as you're able and sing along. Good morning. Good morning, Foothills. What a wonderful day to be worshiping together, all together in person and online. So if you are here in person, and this is the first time that you have been here with us, I invite you to stop by the red welcome table, and we have a gift for you. We also have uh, encouraged you that if you've been attending for quite some time and you're looking for how to get connected, if you stop by that, that table, we have somebody there who can give you some information and answer any questions that you may have. We have lots of ways to get connected here at Foothills. And one is next Sunday on September the 19th, we have the Fumi kickoff for the year. So we invite all 6th through 12th grade uh, youth and their parents to come next Sunday at 4 o'clock and meet right out front in the sanctuary there for an informational meeting to find out what all we have planned for the coming year. This will also include a scavenger hunt, which um, her, I've been told it's an annual scavenger hunt, and um, also a pizza party. So next Sunday, the 19th at four o'clock for the Fumi kickoff. Another way that we can be connected is, I know that many of you have been waiting for this, but the UMW and Missions Committee yard sale. Now I know it's, go ahead and applaud, I know. <laughs> We usually call this the rummage sale, but because of our adapting this great event to the current safety guidelines, we are having a yard sale. So most of the items will be outside. 
We still will have the boutique, but that will be in King's Hall so we can provide distancing and also uh, for uh, wearing masks and limiting the number of people who come in there because your safety is most important to us. So we want to make sure that we can still have some of our great events, but do them in a way that is safe. Now, many of you have been asking, when can I bring my donations? So we will be accepting those on Monday and Tuesday of that week, which is the 27th and the 28th from 9 to 5. Now, the yard sale is that weekend on um, the 30th, September 30th through October 2nd. One thing they have asked is, uh, since we are sort of limited, uh, if not accept clothing this year unless it is women's new or gently used that we can put in the boutique. One last part of that is it takes a lot of volunteers to put on these great events. So if you can help out and volunteer for this, um, stop by the table um, right outside on the patio and sign up to help. If you are watching online and you would like to help as well, you can contact us through our website and, uh, or through our church office. Now, I have one more quick announcement before we go. And Martha, I'm going to do it really fast so that way, uh, since we have a live stream, they wouldn't be able to see you guys, okay? We have a very, very special celebration. Keith Glover got married. And his beautiful wife, Mika, is here today. So if you see them afterwards, make sure you offer them a congratulations and say hello and welcome her into our congregation. All right, now I would like to invite the children to come forward for a time for children with Pastor Lori. Okay, so I took my mask off, but I'm going to stay nice and distance from you. But today, if you remember, we've been doing a sermon series on the names for Jesus, and we have done teacher and friend and way and Lord, and the last one today is presence. Not like gifts, but like actual being physically here. And Jesus is always physically here with us but that can get confusing because like you can't like look at him right and say hello but but he's just as present as if he was and the best way to think about this is think of the person who loves you most like your mom or your dad or if, well I used to ask my kids who loves you most and they'd say grandma so okay so think of the person who loves you most they're not sitting right here but their love is with you right now. So their love is alive and present with you even when they're not physically standing next to you. So that's the way we want to think about Jesus, the presence of Christ in our life, is his love is always real and with us, even if we don't see him. Now, talking about presence and being present, do you remember Pastor Greg? Do you remember him? <laughs> he used to be the senior pastor here. And then he went on a summer vacation that was really long. We call it renewal leave. But he is back. Now wait, 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 because we're going to get even more clapping going on here. He is going to come forward and he's going to share his report of what I did on my summer vacation. <laughs> Now, you can either sit right here to listen while he shares, or you can follow Miss Lisa to go to Kids Connect. But it's okay if you don't stay to listen because he is back. Okay, Pastor Greg, would you come forward? <laughs> Wow. 
Thank you, Pastor Lori. And yes, in case you don't recognize me, my name is Greg Batson, and I am your senior pastor. <laughs> and 77 days ago, I departed this sanctuary following worship and began a summer-long renewal leave. And I intentionally stayed out of touch. So there were no emails, no social media, no work-related communication. So you, probably, you might be wondering, what did you do that whole time if you weren't working? So I thought I would give you a short report this morning here in person and online for those watching us. And it's just like the reports you used to give when you went back to school after the summer and you said, what did I do on my summer vacation, right? So here's my report on that. First, I rested. I truly took an extended time, a Sabbath of rest, where I disconnected from my regular schedule. Some days were busy, some days were completely clear on my calendar. There were daily walks with our dog Buddy, and gardening in the yard, and naps. <laughs> you know, everybody loves naps when you get applause for it, right? And that's one of the favorite things to do. There was a trip to the Eastern Sierras near Bishop and uh, went up there for a few days with some good friends and I only caught a couple of fish, but I was blown away once again by the scenery of the mountains and the streams and the forest and a reminder that God is creator and has provided this beautiful gift of creation for us and to really find rest and renewal in that. There was baseball. There was a magical night at Petco Park when the Padres staged their greatest comeback in history. There were numerous concerts, thanks to my wife, Tanya, with the opening of the new Rady Shell down in the marina area, the Embarcadero for the San Diego Symphony. So we heard some wonderful music in that new outdoor venue. I spent lots of time with family. My son Wesley and I took a road trip all the way up to the Bay Area and back, and we were on college tour visits, visiting campuses. We saw six different campuses, and you can ask him which ones he liked best. <laughs> and that trip reminded me of how beautiful our state is, the diversity of our, our landscape and geography and where we live, and grateful for that. Tanya and I moved our middle son, Dan, into his dorm room to begin his freshman year at Chapman University in Orange, and he's uh, settling in fine and doing great. And then I went for a week to help move our oldest son, Tom, who has a new job in New York City from Philadelphia, where he was living with roommates, to his own apartment in New York City. Now, I love New York City. That was a great trip, um, but... He now lives in a four-floor walk-up, and it was the hottest day of the year. And I've never worked so hard to get moved in with there, but we accomplished that, and uh, he's doing great and has settled in. And we had museum visits and restaurants, and I got to, we got to spend an evening at the U.S. Open for tennis, which we had never done before. That was a lot of fun. And then Tanya and I got a little getaway just this past week due to your generosity. Thank you, everyone, uh, for your gifts. We uh, spent a couple of nights in Dana Point at this beautiful inn and walked along the beach and got sunburned and uh, ate out. And it was a, a great way to end our renewal leave. So thank you, everyone, for providing that. Now, I'm going to tell you something else, what I discovered during this renewal leave. And that is the fact that life itself does not stop. We lost three members of our extended family to death, all unexpected during this time. My mother-in-law, cousin, and nephew. And as I was reflecting upon it, I remembered what C.S. Lewis wrote in his little book, A Grief Observed, about the passing of his own wife. And the way it feels when you hear that news is that 
It's like a concussion. If you've ever had a concussion, you, you hear it, but you don't understand it fully. You don't take it all in. You're disoriented and confused. So we continue to have a time of grieving in our family, of celebrating and remembering these lives and reflecting. And it has caused me and given me pause to make sure that I and everyone reassess where we are in life, what's important, and therefore, what do we value most as we continue to take this journey together. I read a lot, and I like reading. Ten books, to be exact. They range from theology to psychology to Pulitzer Prize winners for fiction and biography. And I know many of you are going to ask me, well, what did you read? And I've got you covered. I am sending out a separate book reviews, recommendations. You'll see it in the Foothills News soon, and I can talk more about that. But I have recommendations for you of six out of those ten books that you might enjoy reading as well. But what it did remind me is how much I love reading, how much... I had gotten away from that and how much it filled me up. So I want to continue that as a spiritual practice and sharing that with you as we move forward. So not to take any more time, but just say in summary, it was a wonderful, restful renewal leave. And I want to especially thank my clergy colleagues, Pastor Christy, Pastor Lori. excellent leadership during this time. Many of you have already told me this morning what a wonderful job they've done. And because of that, I didn't worry about anything. I really didn't. So I'm grateful for them. I am grateful for the entire staff that continues to provide great leadership and uh, commitment to their particular area, areas of ministry, especially as we've been dealing with this latest surge in covid for Staff Parish Relations Committee, for Church Council, for Reverend John Farley for making this leave possible, for all of the lay leadership of this congregation. That's the other reason I didn't worry, because I knew we had very capable lay leadership leading our different committees and areas of ministry. And that continues ongoing, whether I'm here or not. And for your support as a congregation, financially, but more importantly for your prayers and your best wishes during this time. Friends, I'm deeply grateful. Thank you for the opportunity. And it's good to be back. Let us pray. God, thank you for the opportunity to observe Sabbath, time of rest and renewal that you have commanded for all of your creatures. Thank you for colleagues who made this possible, for this congregation that provided the space and the time for it. As we continue to move through the COVID pandemic, we recognize that everyone is exhausted. Everyone needs a time for rest. So may you guide each and every one of us to find personal time for reflection and renewal. And we call upon you, O oh God, to guide us as a community of faith as we move into the unknown of being a post-pandemic church. Remind us that every step we take in this journey, that we rely upon your grace and your strength to sustain us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
And as we come together to prepare our hearts for a time of prayer, oh, our list is long today. Our list is long. We are reminded of all of the commemorations we had yesterday throughout our country, uh, remembering the 9-11 attacks 20 years ago, um, 11 days prior to that, I had given birth to our last son, Patrick. So, uh, I'm, as all of you, I'm sure we all talked about where were we when we heard about the attack on our country. So, we continue to pray for all of those who have been impacted by those attacks, how our life has changed because of them. And we pray also for the continued threats of terrorism and extremism from afar and also from within our own country as we seek to just pray for a life of peace and justice. This week we saw the return of the bodies of our 13 servicemen and women who died in Afghanistan, and we continue to pray for the many Americans and allied Afghanis who have been unable yet to safely leave that country. And we pray for the families of the sailors who we lost at the, in the recent uh, helicopter accident just off the USS Lincoln, off the coast here in San Diego. Many of them had uh, connections here. We continue to pray for the many in our country who are still in recovery from the extreme fire and storm damage that has been caused and that was sustained recently. Closer to home, our longtime Foothills member, Barbara Davis, passed peacefully on Monday morning, September 6th. We'll keep the church family informed as the family um, may make some memorial plans. We ask to keep in prayer all of those still recovering from COVID, some of whom are related to our church family. And we pray for all the families of those who have lost loved ones to COVID. And for the recently diagnosed, we pray that their symptoms would remain mild and the spread can be contained. We pray for all those whose lives and livelihoods have been and continue to be impacted by COVID. And we pray, we pray for those having um, serious uh, surgeries coming up and for those who are recovering from critical surgeries. And we pray for those in our congregation who have suffered falls and have a long road to recovery ahead or those who have had accidents and those who are battling cancer. Last week, I shared that our district superintendent, Reverend Sandy Olwine, had invited us to begin praying for all of our churches and their pastors throughout this year. So the two congregations we lift today in our South District are Calexico United Methodist Church and their pastor, Baldwin Avendano, and Palisades United Methodist Church and their pastor, Richard Annette. And I know there are prayers of gratitude. There is the new college and school seasons that have begun and students returning and we're so thankful for those who have had such wonderful experiences, whether they're the children, our youth, our young adults. We pray for their teachers and their professors. And we do give thanks for our senior pastor, Greg Batson, and his family returning safely to us and also feeling so renewed and ready to face the ministry challenges ahead of us and the ministry blessings that await that's a lot, huh? But we are blessed to pray for one another. And witness will prepare our hearts and our minds for a time of prayer. And as the song ends, I invite you to offer all that you may wish to share with God in the silence of your heart. So let us be in an attitude of prayer.
from our hearts to yours, gracious and amazing God. Lord, we are amazed by you. We stand in awe of your love and mercy, even in the face of our often willful disregard for others, be it through blatant acts of hate and terrorism, as we saw on 9-11, and continue to see again and again at home and throughout the world, through acts of violence perpetuated in the name of twisted philosophies, theologies, or loyalties to those unworthy to be followed, or through our refusal to act on the behalf of a greater good, our blatant disregard for the needs of others, even though you told us to do so. O oh Lord, if left to our own stores of mercy, we would soon find ourselves at a loss for tolerance, respect, and acceptance, too willing to point our fingers at others, holding them responsible and relieving ourselves of any responsibility for growth or change, any responsibility for introspection and preserving at all costs our high regard for ourselves and our ideas and our view of the world. Yet into this chaos, brokenness, and darkness, you speak love. You spread the mercy of your forgiveness and cover the ugliness of our sin, leaving in your wake redemption, reconciliation, beauty, and love. Into the darkness of our times, you offer a true guiding light back to you, not simply as a, a beacon somewhere beyond where we can only hope to approach, but a light planted close within our hearts where you have so graciously taken up residence. You have placed within us the light of Christ, ready to shine forth from us, reflecting Christ's heart of peace, his heart of mercy, his heart of love and care for others. We pray we might look outward at the world, at our communities, at our neighbors, through this light of Christ within us. And that looking through this lens of grace, we might move ever closer to reconciliation to one another. And that looking through this lens of grace, we might more closely reflect your mercy and your love for all. Through acts of loving service and acts that show kindness and respect for others, we pray we might be your light in the world. Oh, gracious God, most merciful, may our hearts be united in our love for you as we unite our voices to sing the prayer that Jesus has taught. morning. Our scripture today is John 14, 15 to 26. 
If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you in a little while, while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live. You also live. You also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered him, Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but it is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, who the, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. This is the work of God with the people for the people of God. We have come to the end of our sermon series, Freeing Jesus. And you may be wondering why the title was Freeing Jesus. Well, of course, it was the title of the book by Diana Butler Bass. But why have we been exploring each of the names and experiences of Jesus in regards to freeing him? Well, for the author, Jesus was taught to her one way, which was presented as the right way. There was only one way to experience Jesus that was the same for everyone. What she realized was that Jesus was kept in a neat and tidy box, which is what happens when we try to limit God or define Jesus in our own terms and experiences without allowing Jesus the space to work in his own way. Diana Butler Bass explains in her book that she also began to see herself trapped in a box or a cage is how she described it. When her experience of Jesus no longer fit by what she was taught, she began to explore her faith and open herself to learn about Jesus in new ways. When she did this, she not only freed herself, but she freed Jesus to be who Jesus is, more than just one way for all people. This book also describes the author's faith journey in which, as a child, she learned that Jesus is her friend. At times in her childhood, she was lonely, and so Jesus was there as her friend. As she grew into a teenager, she learned that Jesus was her teacher. She also learned from her experience at an evangelical Bible church that Jesus as teacher can be a hot topic for some who only see Jesus as Savior. But as she studied the Bible, she learned that the disciples referred to Jesus as rabbi, teacher as well. 
Then she continued through her life in college, graduate school, seminary, and through her personal life with family challenges. Her faith continued to grow as each name of Jesus became more personalized and understood. Now, this book was a retelling of her faith journey as her faith grew throughout her life, but it also suggests that Jesus is all of these and more. Jesus is our friend and our teacher and our Savior and our Lord. Jesus is the way to be and to live our lives and to be present with us. Today, we'll explore how Jesus can be all of these and more through Jesus' presence. Now, in the scripture, Jesus is preparing his disciples for his departure from earth. But he assures them that he will not leave them alone, that he will come to them, and that he will ask the Father to send another advocate to be with them forever. This advocate, the Holy Spirit, is Jesus' presence that will be with us forever. Jesus is made alive to us through the Spirit. Our faith comes alive through the work of the Spirit. The Spirit empowers Jesus to be continually present in the world even though his physical body is no longer with us, but at the right hand of God. Bass shares a story in this chapter of the book about her daughter. When her daughter was young, she asked her, asked her mother, Where is Jesus? Well, Bass answered, Jesus is in our heart. Her daughter then asked her dad, Bass's husband, where is Jesus? And her husband said, Jesus is in heaven. Well, Bass explains that she and her husband were echoing their childhood theology. Bass's early years in the Methodist church taught her an eminent theology, an indwelling of the Spirit. God is near, close to us within us, living in our hearts. Her husband grew up in the Presbyterian church that emphasized a transcendent theology, that God is far off watching over us. God's sovereignty goes beyond the universe. As the song says, he has the whole world in his hands. Well, churches typically emphasize one more than the other, but both of these theologies are true. God is both imminent and transcendent, here and there, close and far, completely with us, and absolutely beyond our imagination. So Jesus' presence is both near and and far. The indwelling of the Spirit gives us strength to live more Christ-like. Knowing that we can never escape Christ's loving presence gives us peace and assurance that we are never alone. Christ is always with us, above us, below us, around us, going ahead of us, and following behind. Now, for some, it's hard to connect to Jesus who is so near to us or within us because we may not feel he is large enough to handle our problems. Yet for some, it's hard to warm up to a Jesus sitting on a throne at the right hand of God because he seems so far away and feels out of touch with our intimate struggles. Well, we all have different experiences, right? So we can have different experiences of Jesus. 
We can have many different experiences throughout our lives where we feel that Jesus is our friend when we need a friend, that Jesus is our teacher when we need guidance and direction, when we need to be held accountable and challenged. Jesus is our Savior when we need to be saved from sin and heartache. Jesus is our Lord when we need to live for something bigger than ourselves, when it's not all about us. Jesus shows us the way to all of these and more by being present with us, whether that is within us or within the world. We get to know the loving presence of Jesus by our experience. John Wesley described it as his heart feeling strangely warmed. Julian of Norwich described it as revelations of divine love through visions she experienced. Thomas Merton experienced it through silence and centering prayer. Even Oprah referred to it as whispers and nudges. Jesus as presence is known through our experiences and revealed to us by the Spirit. It's a very personal, individual thing. Some of our experiences may be similar, but they are still very unique to each one of us. Another story that the author shared really stuck with me, and I'll share it with you. She told of the time that she was at her favorite coffee shop, and her favorite barista was there, a young Muslim woman. She noticed something different about her. She was not wearing her usual black hijab. She was wearing a bright green one with edged with sparkling sequins. So Bass complimented her on it and said, I love your scarf. Well, the woman said, you know, they told me I had to wear black. And so Bass was kind of taken aback and said, what? And the woman said, the rules. They said I had to wear black, but I didn't believe it. So I looked it up myself. I don't have to wear black. I can wear any color I want. She had searched the rules for herself, not listening to someone else's interpretation, but reading the text on her own and making her faith personal and meaningful for her. This book is about Diana Butler Bass looking it up for herself. And we need to look it up for ourselves too. For our lives to be filled with God's loving presence, we don't just take someone else's interpretation or someone else's word for it. We look it up and make our faith our own. We open ourselves for God to show us how God wants to show up in our lives, not how we tell God to show up. When we open ourselves and allow Jesus the space to show us who he is, it may surprise us. The Spirit may reveal to us what we have been searching for all along in this moment of our faith journey. I invite you to look it up. The questions that we still hold in our hearts, look it up. The hesitations we harbor that keep us from being all in, look it up to see why we are holding back. 
the reasons why we are ignoring or avoiding God, look it up. Maybe not Google it or research it, but look up. Look up, look down, look around you, look inward for God's presence because it is there. Make this time, make this to be the time to make your faith your own, to grow your faith and allow God's loving presence to pour in you and then back out into the world. We will have some opportunities this fall and throughout the next year so you can look it up, so you can grow your faith, so that you can get to know who Jesus is to you and how Jesus can be all of these names, and more. My weekly Exploring Scripture class returns October the 7th. And stay tuned for more studies, groups, and classes that will be coming. There are also tons of ministries here, new ones and established ones, where you can experience God's presence through serving Get connected and allow Jesus' presence to free you to do something new, to experience Jesus in new ways, and to have your faith renewed. When we free Jesus of limitations and expectations, the Spirit comes to us and resides with us as our advocate forever. When we free Jesus, we free ourselves from what is keeping us from God. Amen. As witness comes forward, I challenge you this week to think about where Jesus is for you. Perhaps on the way home today in the car or have a conversation after watching the service online. Ask someone, where is Jesus? Do you feel that Jesus is more in your heart or in heaven? You can also share your experiences of Jesus' presence and perhaps how you have experienced Jesus as friend, teacher, Savior, Lord, or way. Perhaps there are other ways you have experienced Jesus that this series did not cover. These conversations are a first step in looking it up as we continue to make our faith our own. As Witness shares with us an offering of music, let us share our offerings of our hearts, gifts, and lives.
Let us pray. Almighty God, Jesus, our friend, teacher, Savior, and Lord, Holy Spirit of truth, you come to us this day in a very personal way, yet you still hold the universe in your hands. Your presence fills our hearts and our world. Thank you for being so multifaceted that we can have more experiences of you that make our faith personal and meaningful. Thank you for not limiting our experiences to be all the same and only one experience in our life. We are grateful that our faith journey is a progression of our faith throughout our lives in which we continue to get to know who you are. Even in the times when we aren't sure who you are and the times when you feel so far away, we can trust in your promise that you will never leave us. And that the Spirit will always be with us and present within us, advocating for us forever. In this moment today, we free you, Jesus, to show up and be present with us, however you see fit. Thank you for freeing us from other people's expectations and interpretations from sin, death, fear, and pain. In the coming weeks, months, and year, come to us 
and show us that you are present with us in our particular need. Help us to open our hearts to your presence as we grow our faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for being here today. We invite you to come back as Pastor Greg returns to the pulpit, and we're all so excited for that. So as you go today, go with the assurance that grace is enough and that God's loving presence is with you both near and far and will stay with you. Go in peace. Amen.